What's up, guys? Welcome to local band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from, from anywhere in the entire world. I, I want to hear your music. Alright, what's up guys? Welcome back to another local band Smokeout. I'm your host BG and I'm doing something different today. I've been working on this list for about four weeks. Four weeks literally I've been working on this list. The, the top, my top 20 favorite albums or, e or EPs ever made that I would take to an island. I can only take 20 and I must count them down in order going from 20 to number one. There's no way anyone will agree with this list, and that's okay. It's all in fun, and it is multi-genre. I've got a whole bunch of different artists. That being said, let's start it off right here with the 20 best albums, in my opinion, ever made that I would have to take to an island. Coming in at number 20 is a Skylet Drive's She Watched the Sky EP, uh, which is their first EP ever. If you're not familiar with the Skylet Drive, they're essentially like a emo screamo metalcore band. Not really metalcore. It's like it's like pop punk with screaming and metal. It's 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 a little all over the place, but it's awesome. And I actually am really really close with that band. Um, R.I.P. to their singer Jordan Blake. Um, but uh, we've did many interviews with him and uh, the other members of the band, including their their current vocalist jag um but anyway that, that one always holds a special place to my heart so that is number 20 right there number 19 is actually going to be bringing the horizons suicide season that's the one where the girls holding the guts on the cover right there uh that is kind of the album that like essentially got me into deathcore and that style of of metalcore deathcore if you will in general um and it was Probably the last really, really heavy album that, that Bring Me the Horizon did. Obviously not as heavy as the album before it, but uh, still fantastic. And I have i don't think there's any skips in that CD. So that's why I got it at number 19. This list gets is really... You don't even understand how hard this list was to put together, guys. Like, it's I don't want to show you everything, but there's scribbles. I have arrows going over here, here, rearranging. It took, it took about a month or more to put this together. Uh, number 18 is Mindless Self-Indulgence, and the uh, the album's called Frankenstein Girls. I don't remember the full title of it. It's like Frankenstein Girls, something, something, something. But uh, it's it's got like a cartoonish kind of graphic. There's like 28 to 30 songs on it. All of them are like two minutes or less. And it, it's it's that album is so far ahead of its time. I think it came out in like the late 90s, but it could hold up with music that comes out today uh, as far as like bands trying stuff with experimenting uh, in electronics and stuff. Uh, Frankenstein Girls will, ah, I don't remember, but if you just search it, it'll pop right up. Seen them live a couple times, always a good one. Uh, number 17 is uh, Journey's Greatest Hits, the one that has the Red Phoenix cover on it. Uh, I, I'm an 80s baby, and I grew up listening to Journey, as particularly that album, the Greatest Hits one. Uh, I've probably heard it a thousand times, Separate Ways is one of my favorites. Uh, they just had so many jams. Journey, Journey is incredible. Steve, Steve Perry is amazing. Uh, so I got that as number seventeen. Uh, by this point, you guys are probably like, "Well, I don't. These, this is not the list I was expecting." And you know, maybe it's not, and that's okay. Janet Jackson is number sixteen. What? Janet Jackson has an album called Design of a Decade, which is essentially like a greatest hits, but also has like a couple of new songs on it at the time when it came out, like Runaway. Um, I forget what else, but that, that album is so good. Jammed it from top to bottom hundreds and hundreds of times. Love, uh, love Janet. Seen her live before. It was amazing. Number 15 is Under Oath, They're Only Chasing Safety, which is, I think I discovered that when I lived in Orlando in the early 2000s, I think. And uh, yeah, that album was amazing. I had to see them live multiple times after that came out. Uh, burned a hole in the car CD player, started learning how to scream and sing a little bit. I'm terrible at them. But uh, I tried to that particular album, Under Oath, Thrilling like Chasing Safety. Number 14 is actually a mixtape, but it counts. I can bring whatever I want in this island. My, I, get to, I get to pick. Uh, Wiz Khalifa, Kush and Orange Juice is, is probably one of my favorite hip-hop albums, mixtapes, whatever you want to call it, of all time. And... Uh, He's actually just recently announced that um, he's going to be releasing Cushion Orange Juice 2. 
uh, in the very near future, which is awesome. Excited to hear how that comes out. Hopefully it has like the same production team and everything because that, that first one is just superb. Um, number 13 is Incubus, except it's their uh, one of their old, old albums called Science, which is an acronym and I have no idea what science stands for. But that album is amazing. So far ahead of its time. They actually had a different DJ for that album. And I mean, he was not on anything else after that. I think on Make Yourself, they switched to uh, DJ Kilmore from DJ Life to DJ Kilmore. Um, and it has a... Com after Science, they have a completely different sound. Way more radio friendly. But Science is just crazy experimental. And I encourage you to check it out. Uh, especially Idiot Box and... Um, just just the whole album's amazing. Zomboy is number 12. If you watch the live show, I play Zomboy almost every single day. Uh, we tried to set up an interview with him. We went back and forth a couple times with the manager, and we just weren't able to work it out, unfortunately. But um, Zomboy's Game Time EP, which was kind of like his transition from going to from Joshua Melody, his previous name, to hearing Skrillex and wanting to do that and becoming Zomboy. It's only, it's only like four or six songs, depending if you get the deluxe or not. But uh, absolutely incredible, and it, it holds up today with today's dubstep music, and I love dubstep slash bro stuff, so how to put that on there. Number 11 is Jodeci. So you may have heard of Casey and JoJo, but were you familiar with their group before that when it was uh, when it was called Jodeci? Their first album's called Forever My Lady, and I've played that thing a thousand times. It is a panty dropper, fellas. You know what I'm talking about. If you love R&B and baby making music, Jodeci Forever My Lady is for you. Uh, number 10 is going to be Led Zeppelin's self-titled album. Uh, I remember the first time I heard Zeppelin, I was probably like six or seven years old, and it just sounded different than all the other music that my parents were playing for me. Keep in mind, there was like a lot of Journey, and uh, all of a sudden my dad starts playing me Deep Purple and Led Zeppelin and... I'd already heard the Beatles and stuff, but there's something about that album that was like struck with me, stuck with me and struck me. Like I had to just listen to it over and over again. And it was so, so fantastic. Um, it holds up as one of the greatest albums of all time, in my opinion. Number nine is our only drum and bass artist, and that is Pendulum. Pendulum's album Immersion, to me, is hands down the greatest drum and bass album ever made. Um, I don't do very many drummer bass reactions on, on this channel, but if you enjoy drum and bass, you have to know that album. It's just a staple of what everyone else wants to achieve, in my opinion. And it's there's catchy hooks on every single song. It's very upbeat. It flows perfectly from one song to the next, all, and they do that on purpose all the way to the end of it. It's fantastic. Uh, number eight is going to be Harvard. Now, this album is spelled H-A-R-V-A-R-D, but shortly after it came out, they were forced to change their band name because of the, the University Harvard. So they switched to HRVRD, if you're interested in looking up their music. But their first album was called The Inevitable and I. And it was produced by the same guy that uh, did Circa Survives, Juturna's album. And it has a feel like that. So if you like that kind of like indie slash post-hardcore slash just underground, dreamy, catchy vibes... This album is spectacular, uh, and it was hard not putting that higher up on the list because I've jammed it more than some of the other ones I'm about to mention, but they had the other ones kind of hold a more special place in my heart, so we'll see. Uh, number seven is I See Stars, New Demons, and I'd already been an I See Stars fan for a while, fan of theirs for a while, but when they got to work with Joey Sturgis for New Demons, it was like the perfect blend of metalcore, super high-pitched singing, and just unusual electronic-y sounds involved in metal. And it came out a while ago, but it, it absolutely influenced hundreds, if not thousands, of bands. And it starts right away with just mayhem, just from the opening track and how it all kind of just goes throughout. Fantastic CD. Uh, number six is Bless the Fall, His Last Walk. And uh, I've, I've interviewed Craig, Craig Mabbitt of Bless the Fall of Escape the Fate, uh, many times, or not only once, but uh, we've talked many times in person. I've seen him at, at gigs and shows and at the Warp Tour. And every time I see him, I give him a big old hug and I say thank you for making the album His Last Walk from Bless the Fall. Um, although it is a Christian album, I'm not super religious myself personally. You kind of can't tell. It's just chock full of awesome riffs and dope screaming. And just it's intense. It's energetic. But yet at the same time, it's it's uh, about God and Jesus. And if that's your thing, then I encourage you to check it out. 
Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. No skips on that one. Uh, number five is the Beatles number ones. I couldn't decide if I wanted to do the Beatles, the blue and the red album double disc, but I didn't know if that would count. So I just went with the Beatles number ones, which I think is like the sixth or seventh best selling CD of all time. I remember when it came out, uh, everyone on in the news, like this is like right when the internet and AOL was out. Uh, I remember my parents being like, they're saying this could be the best selling album of all time. It's like 32 songs on one CD. I, all of them hit number one from the Beatles, something like that. I don't know if it's that many songs, but I love the Beatles. I have, uh, I have a Beatles tattoo right here that says, all you need is love. Um, anyway, love you, Paul McCartney. Number four is Linkin Park, but it's the reanimation album. The reanimation album is the only album I've ever owned on Super Audio CD. I don't even remember what I used to play it on, maybe like PlayStation 2 or something, but it was an expensive CD to buy, but it was so worth it. And I, to this day, RIP Chester, I really, really hope that Mike Shinoda considers doing a reanimation too. Because it's a cool way for all the, if you're unfamiliar with reanimation, the first one, it's basically like hybrid theory with a couple of bonus tracks, except all their homies got on it and did features like corns on it, stains on it, uh, a bunch of rappers are on it. It's so different than when the normal versions are, even like the beats and stuff are completely different in their instrumentals. The way some songs are sung are different. There's different lyrics, but it's just, I don't know. It's something about it that uh, to me was better than hybrid theory, which I know is a crazy statement, but I would love to get a reanimation too and have, um, you know, obviously Chester's voice come back and uh, be part of that. And then we have all of his friends and family and loved ones doing just verses and guest appearances and stuff. Uh, that was number four, I said? Yeah, number three. Now these next three right here are... F putting, the, putting these three in order was very difficult. Um, Periphery. But the Periphery does an album called Juggernaut, which is essentially, it's Alpha, Omega, but the two combined is called Juggernaut. It's all on one album, so it counts. But uh, Periphery is currently and, and has been for a long time my favorite metal band. I've seen them live, I think, three times now. And uh, they rarely, they play like maybe two or three songs total from that album because it's a little bit dated. But uh, it, it is so good. And it really shows off Spencer Satello's full range of singing and screaming and just Misha's, Misha's guitar playing and the way that his guitar uh, riffs can just take you on a journey. And there's a lot of heavy songs, but there's a lot of soft songs. There's stuff in the middle. There's experimental stuff. It's all over the place. It's fantastic. Number two is the one that I think most of my friends would think would be my number one, but it's not. And it used to be for years. But Circa Survive, Jew Turna is my number two favorite album ever made. And I mean for like the last 15 years, it's been my number one, but something recently overtook it. But Jew Turna is um it's it's right after anthony green left say ocean say ocean however you want to say it he he left the first time and uh, retreated to i think the story goes he retreated to like a log cabin somewhere and uh, met a guitarist or he knew this guitarist and they just went in there and just partied and and wrote music and watched movies and they particularly watched uh, a movie called eternal sunshine and the spotless mind like over and over again and uh, a lot of that movie is referenced in the lyrics to that album, which is flawless. Absolute 10 out of 10 album, Circus Revives, Juturna. Um, and maybe someday we'll get a follow-up to that. But I think most Circa fans would agree that that is their, their best work. It's funny how sometimes like an album, a band's first album, almost every time is considered like their best work of art. Not, obviously, it's not always the case. But it seems like most of the time a band's first album is is their best work or or the bulk public would agree with that number one is a band called movements and the album is called no good left to give it is such an emotional roller coaster of of poetic style singing screaming with just dreamy vibes and i don't know i feel like every time i listen to that album and i've heard it hundreds of times it opens with a song called in my blood which is probably my favorite song on the album, but I feel like I hear something different every time I listen to that CD. Uh, so if, if you if you get a chance and you're unfamiliar, go look up Movements, No Good Left to Give. It's a white it's a white covered CD um, with like a face on it. I don't remember exactly, but it, it is so damn good. And that is my number one. And there are a ton of bands I wanted to put on this list, but it was really hard 
to to get it windled down just to uh just to 20 but you guys try it it took me over a month to do this how would you, who would you put on your top 20 these are tw the 20 albums you can bring to an island you must put them in order that's where it gets hard it's not so hard picking the 20 it's putting them in order that's the complicated part go from 20 to number one it'll take you if you do a comment uh your 20 i promise it's going to take you a couple minutes to do it if not longer but uh, let me know who some of your faves are. Do you agree with anything I did on this list? Probably not, and that's okay. But hopefully you, you enjoy some of these albums I've mentioned. And if not, please take it upon yourself to discover those artists, discover those CDs, those, those um, in my opinion, timeless classics, and uh, support them. Reach out to them if they're still a band, they're still active, and and uh, hit the follow, tell a friend. Hey, man, we were sleeping on this one. We do. How did we miss this? This album's fantastic. Whatever the case may be, that's awesome. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. It, again, took me forever to put this together, but I have a blast doing them. I don't know what we're going to do next as far as the top 10 goes, but hopefully you dig it. Kindly consider clicking the subscribe button if you enjoyed this. Localbandsmokeout.com if you ever need me to shoot something specific for you. Any genre is accepted. Put your music in a space, literally into the atmosphere. Banruption.com is 100% free to sign up for. Uh, if you'd like this show to grow and expand, me to be able to shoot more content on a regular basis, please go to patreon.com slash localmanbg. We even have a, a free tier that you can sign up for if you just want to check it out first before uh, committing. And finally, if you're playing shows, especially here in the States, you have to have merch. And I highly recommend mymerchguy.com. Use code LBS420 for an excellent discount. In fact, that discount could save you hundreds of dollars. Other than that, though, guys, I am your host, BG, saying cheers. Keep blazing in peace. I'll see you next time.